I want to next introduce Peter Yang. He is a product lead at Reddit and the founder of Odyssey DAO, a Web3 learning community with a mission to onboard a million people into the Web3 economy. Odyssey DAO actually won the Golden Kitty Award, Peter. That's cool. Just last year, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Can, so it was the Golden Kitty Award for education. Um, and Odyssey DAO is all about education. So I'm very excited for your presentation. I got a sneak peek at it. I saw that adorable baby in the presentation. <laughs> is that your adorable baby? Yes, that's mine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we are looking forward to uh, seeing your whole talk. Go ahead. All right, let me uh, share my screen. All right, so I, I, I just wanna talk about, um, I, I thought, you know, being a product manager, I would talk about how Web3 can solve real customer problems, right? And um, just to open up a little bit about myself, uh, yeah, th th this is my three months old daughter. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, I really care about the career economy and, you know, I want to help people make a living doing what they love online. And I got into Web3 maybe like a year and a year and a half, half ago and started learning everything about blockchain and everything else. And I, I thought, you know, why not share my learning journey with other people? So that's why I started um, Odyssey DAO to provide uh, quality Web3 education. And now we have learning paths about NFTs, DeFi, and everything else about Web3. Web um, I also have my Web2 day job. I'm a product lead at Reddit, and I worked at these other large tech companies before. Okay, so you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us came across this quote in Vitalik's uh, interview for Time. And you know what he said was ultimately the goal of crypto is not to play games with multi uh, with million dollar pictures of monkeys, it's to do things that accomplish meaningful effects in the real world. And I would just like to talk about how crypto and Web three can actually meaningfully improve the, the world. Um, so what is the thesis of Web three? Right, like people keep talking about decentralization, but if you ask a normal person, like decentralization is not really on the list of needs that they actually care about. I think the thesis of Web3 is that crypto has one feature that has never existed before. The blockchain allows people to trust each other. And with trust, it will allow people to finally own the upside from their work. So for me personally, like what I'm really excited about Web3 is that it will, it will hopefully democratize access to um, work, democratize access to finance, and democratize access to different valuable assets. So what do I mean by this? So democratize access to work. Um, so, you know, having, ha having spent my <laughs> entire life kind of chasing paper credentials, right? Like in the Ivy League degree, working at fan companies, uh, you know, my, my friends spend a lot of time practicing Lee code. It's just like a lot of people just spend time chasing these credentials versus doing work that they actually care about. And I think the promise of DAOs is that it can let anybody in the world prove their worth through actual work. So as, as an example, a, a girl from Indonesia could come into Odyssey DAO, and this is a real story. She could design the website from scratch, just like do do it. And because she did such a great job with the website, allow us to win our award, you know, now, now she's getting a monthly crypto salary and she's also now the product lead for our DAO, right? It, like I didn't have to like you know ask if she had ten years of experience or like you know all these kind of paper credit credentials. She just did the work. So you know that's the promise of DAOs. But the reality is that uh, right now you know DAOs are mostly run from score servers, and if if you if you come to one of these DAOs, like the signal to noise ratio is just like very bad. It's just like there's like so many random channels. It's very hard to understand what exactly is going on. So if, if you're building a Web3 startup, if, if you're building like a DAO tooling startup, I encourage you to think about these three things. Uh, the first thing is like, you know, how do I even find DAOs that I care about, right? Um, the second thing is once I join a DAO, how do I figure out how to contribute? Um, we need tools that match people to DAO tasks based on their skills and interests. Um, it, it's, it's, not, it's not good enough that you're just interested in, for example, writing a blog post for Odyssey. Like you should also have some sort of way to prove that you're actually good at, at, at the task at hand, right? Um, and, and the final piece is like 
DAO conversation. You know, if I do all this work for the DAO, like how do I get recognized? Um, how do I transparently see what kind of rewards are at stake for doing this work? And probably more importantly, like how do I actually earn on-chain credentials that I can carry with me over to my next job or to my next, next DAO? Uh, so those, those are kind of like three problems that like are largely unsolved. And I'm, I'm hoping to see more DAO startups solve these problems. Um, moving on, let's talk about democratizing access to finance. So the traditional financial system, right, as, as, as you all know, is very opaque. It's run by middlemen such as banks, and it's not really available to uh, 1.7 billion people in the world. They don't have access to a bank. And the promise of DeFi is that it could create a more accessible and transparent system that puts control back in the hands of people. So for, for example, a, a dad uh, could earn stable coins from a DAO, could put that money into a DeFi protocol to get 10 times the yield of the local bank uh, in wh whatever country he, he's at. And then he can eventually use his earnings to pay for his uh, kid's education or maybe even invest in a friend's new venture. So I think that's the promise of DeFi, uh, to me at, at least. But like today, DeFi um, is, is, is just like a lot of products and solutions that are optimized for people who are like really into degen yield farming, <laughs> like, you know, doing like five or six different things to get 10,000% 10, APY or like, you know, like those kind of solutions. It's, it's, it's not really, it's, it's not really a, a industry that's optimized for bringing on the normal people or the ma masses, right? So like, you know, three, three, I think problems that remain unsolved in DeFi. The first problem is like, how can I send money to someone, right? Like, um, I, th I think the original Bitcoin pro promise of um, peer to peer electronic payments, it, it kind of remains unfulfilled. Um, so, so I think, you know, how, how, how can we bring about solutions where there, there is a broad consumer and merchant adoption of, of coins and tokens that are stable. And there's a simple way for people to like both convert fiat to these coins and also convert these coins back to fiat, right? Like that promise really remains unfulfilled in my opinion. Uh, the second promise is, you know, how can I save money? Like instead of going after these crazy 10,000% APIs, how can I just have a very simple, easy to use interface that's accessible with my mobile phone where I can earn, you know, 10% yield or something from a stable coin that, that, that I own, right? Like that, that will really kind of bring about the masses uh, who have a lot of their money in like 0.1% APY bank savings accounts. And the last part, uh, I think is crowdfunding. You know, how, how, how can I, like, how can we build platforms that make it easier for anyone in the world to find and fund a project that they believe in? Like, uh, it's, it's, it's not right to me that the best startups and the best companies are only reserved for accredited investors. And like, you know, normal people cannot access or cannot fund and get upside from a project that they actually really want to support. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's DeFi. So the, the last thing I want to talk about is, uh, is uh, NFTs, you know, democratize access to assets. And, you know, the story here, going back to my creator economy roots, is that, you know, creators and fans are barely making any money uh, after platforms take their cut. In, in some cases, like Instagram, like they're actually not making any money at all from their content, <laughs> right, for, for, for the most part. And the other thing is like valuable assets, such as home ownership, it's, it's, it's just like really out of reach for many people. So I, I think NFTs as a broad category can really democratize ownership of all types of assets. And for example, a student could uh, buy an NFT for a learning community and that NFT could grant him or her access to the community's paid courses and events. And then as the community grows in value, uh, the NFT will grow in value too. And then maybe eventually the student can gift the NFT to another student or someone that they want to have this education, right? This is like a real example uh, from my friend's startup called Invisible College, you go check, check it out. But like, you know, how, how, do, how do we think about NFTs as more of a thing that provides utility as opposed to like what NFTs are right now, which is similar to DeFi. Uh, a lot of the NFT volume is just coming from a few traders flipping JPEGs to make short-term profits, right? There's like a lot of scams out there a lot, a lot of projects that are just like uh, trying to get traders to flip profits, right? 
So I, th I think NFTs uh, are actually probably the broadest uh, thing that I'm most excited about to bring the masses into crypto. And like there's some problems that need to be solved. So for example, like uh, how can I even find an asset that I like? There, there are now over 250 million NFTs uh, on OpenSea. And we, we just need like a better discovery mechanism other than surfacing just like trending pro projects. Uh, for creators, I think NFTs will become a major monetization channel similar to subscriptions and ads, right? I, I, I think every creator will start hopefully using NFTs to make a living from their fans. So we, we, we need platforms that help creators issue price and use NFTs to, to make a living and mo mobilize their fans. And I think ThirdWeb is coming up here after me and like, you know, that as an example of one such platform. Uh, and of course, NFTs are not just like, you know, pictures. There can be a lot more for NFTs. It can represent credentials, it can represent membership tickets, uh, real estate, and so much more. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping some people will start companies that expand the asset types for NFTs and start going to some of these more interesting uh, or like, you know, start going to some of these other categories. Um, so just to summarize, you know, like my Web3 journey, um, I tweeted out uh, back last year, hey, I want to build a learn learning DAO that serves the transition of talent to Web3. And it really took off. And a bunch of people came into my uh, little Discord server. And in the beginning, it was kind of just like me doing a lot of work. But slowly and surely, people stepped up to contribute to make the web website, to help me make the NFTs. And we were able to raise $100,000 uh, from my initial crowd crowdfund. And um, now we're planning some additional stuff around like NFT collections and like kind of like expanding the types of learning that this DAO uh, will deliver. And it's, it's like it's like a it's like a pretty amazing story when I think about it, right? Because like just basically like a bunch of random people came together into a community <laughs> and made this thing happen. So I really believe in Web three, and I really believe in Web 3s potential to democratize access to uh, work, to finance, and to assets. And um, yeah, if, if you want to connect with me, I'm available on Twitter. I have a blog and you're also welcome to join my DAO. That's, That's awesome, it. Peter. Thank you. I am so grateful that you um, started this DAO and that you're leading it because it is doing really important work in the world. And like, you didn't have to do that. You know, you didn't have to spend all this time building this community. Um, and even people in the chat, audience members that are watching are saying, oh, I subscribe. This looks great. Um, so I have a you you talked a lot about like an optimistic optimistic view of NFTs, which I love. And we have a question in the chat from Anshik, a software developer about NFTs. So they say, what are your thoughts on the future of NFTs? As a full stack JavaScript developer wanting to work for a Web3 slash blockchain startup, would you advise working in the NFT space or maybe go more crypto fintech startup? What do you think? Um, I, I'm, I'm a... I, I think NFTs, like, like I mentioned, has the broadest potential to bring the masses into Web3, right? And, and there's kind of like near term opportunities and uh, longer term opportunities. I, I think in the near term, I, I really do feel like a lot of creators will, will jump on NFTs and, and hopefully they'll use it pro properly. It's not just like a cash grab, they'll use it to actually bring their 1,000 true fans into a community and empower them to spread the word or like do stuff for the creator and like, you know, help them succeed. So I think there's like a big opportunity. There's like a bunch of like 99% of creators are on the outside looking. And mm -hmm. if you if you do a company or like if you're joining a company that actually helps this ha happen, I think, I think there's like huge upside, both from creators and from uh, Web2 companies and brands who are looking to use NFTs. And the longer term thing is, is just like expanding the different asset types of NFTs, like expanding to, uh, I mean, <laughs> okay, a, a good, good example is like, I recently bought a house in the Bay Area and it's like super expensive, right? And like a lot of middlemen took their cut of, of my transaction. There's like 10 different middlemen yeah. from my agent to like all this stuff took a cut. Maybe, maybe yeah. there's a future where, where like the NFT, like the house is like the NFT or something. <laughs> like there's a way to just like, you know, buy the NFT directly from the, the seller without all these middlemen taking a cut of everything. I mean, this is like far off because of regulation and all it's like, you know, uh, incumbent industries. But like people who, who actually have the courage to expand the, the use cases and the asset classes, like I think I really respect, right? Because it's, it's a lot harder than just like letting people trade JPEGs. 
Yeah. If there are people that want to go in that direction, would you guide them towards like the smart contract um, category of Odyssey DAO and start learning more about smart contracts? What do they need to start learning to expand all these um, utilities of NFTs? Yeah, totally. I, I, th I think just like a clear three, three step plan in my mind. The first step is just oh. like go to Odyssey and, and just read the NFT guide. It will give you a really mm -hmm. good sense of like, okay, you know, how do I find good NFT projects? How do I avoid scams? How do I make an NFT collection myself? The second step, I think, uh, just to plug someone else here, is, is like, go check out their web. They, they uh, for some reason, they've uh, decided not to make any money. So they've limited all their fees. <laughs> so, so you can just like uh, create your own NFT collection on their web. Uh, and, and like, just, just try it out, right? Just try it out and, and like put it onto OpenSea and see, see how, how it goes. And then um, I, th I think once you have those two experiences, really kind of try to find your community of people who care about NFTs and like try to work with them to see uh, to, to see if you can actually put together like a legit project, right? And, and like kind of go from there or like try to understand people's needs so you can build a platform in this space. Yeah, people's needs, but then also your special interests. If you're a real estate agent, explore this in terms of real estate or if you are an event producer, explore this in terms of uh, event tickets, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah three-step like process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you, you want to build a startup that does NFTs for real estate, it might be a more lonely journey early on, right? Because like no one's doing this right now, but like um, there's definitely like a massive customer need around some of this stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, looking forward to having you in less than an hour in our group Q and A. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.